All right, today we're talking about augmented reality and how to utilize it for product promotion. All right, so before we get started in creating the project, creating anything in Unity, what we need to do is obtain our assets. Now, for this, we're gonna be creating a self-contained marketing device. That is, we have a product, and we have information that we want to display about that product to help continue engaging our audience with it. Now for this, in our example here, we're gonna be utilizing a card, that is a, a trading card, and we're gonna be finding assets that relate to that. So in my case, we're utilizing uh, a trading cards that just came out from a group called Too Hype uh, through a company called True Creator. And basically what they are is their content creation uh, team, agency, uh, house, a group of friends basically. And what we're going to be doing is taking their videos, taking uh, information like to their YouTube links, like linking to their YouTube and the likes, and giving it some like sort of little bit of a flair to it to give a bit of an experience to their users. So that then we want to emulate as if we're scanning the card and they get to see some kind of cool effect on the trading cards that expands not just having the trading card itself, but allowing them to provide information and provide additional ways for them to buy more cards, uh, see their latest videos, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna create a Unity project and we're going to be uh, obtaining those assets and putting it all in to a base project. So to get the project going, we've created a Unity project. We're adding the Vuforia image recognition, and that is go to your developer.vuforia.com and find the download package to bring into Unity. Uh, I brought in an AR camera into the scene, and what we are effectively doing is uh, creating an image target that is the trading card itself that we're gonna be scanning, and then we need to create output on top of that. So for this example, what we're going to be doing is we're going through not only how to create output onto an AR experience, but also then how to sequence that. So that is loading pieces at a time. In our case, we're going to be utilizing scripting along with animations in Unity to achieve this. There are probably a number of different ways that you can do this, but to give you a real basic outlook on how to make something flow through as time goes on, uh, I want to utilize these two uh, options. So I have our image target there. I have all the assets down in our panel down below. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to, on our image target, set up the image target, set up uh, all the assets underneath that image target so that when we scan it, we can see right now what is happening. Okay, so I've gone through and on our image target here, we now have a few different holders in here. We've got like a, a video, which is like an initial sort of transition-y sort of effect to show that it's recognized. Uh, we have the logo of, uh, of the card itself. Uh, we have a video that I wanna have that sort of like surrounds the card when it's uh, active. Uh, we have some information, we have the latest video, and we have like a watch more sort of um, button effectively. So let me show you this, if I scan it right now, what this sort of does. So if we scan this, we have a whole bunch of stuff occurring. We can see uh, over to the left is like an info card. We have the video surrounds, which is the electricity. We have the logo. We have the watch the latest video and a watch more style button. And then we just have this a transition effect, like constantly going off over and over and over again. And so if we switch off like everything except for the transition effect to start with, we can then see it's, it's a lot cleaner. So the intention for me is that that transition plays once, then, then the logo will show. So as in that will show then afterwards with some sort of like zooming based effect. Then once that's complete, uh, we have this constantly staying on and we get to basically a state where it's like, it's done the initial loading and now we're in a point where we want to constantly keep on showing it. So then we have like an info card that will show up. We have the latest video that will show up. And then we have like a, a button to interact to say, hey, go check out the channel, go watch more. So that's the end goal. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna go through and set up animations and setting up like a loading style script 
so that you can uh, allow this to run through as required. So let's go through and do that next. Okay, so I've gone through and I've created like a loading process. I've set everything up so that we have it all ready to go. So let me take you through what it's actually doing now. And then I'm gonna take you through how to actually do it in Unity itself. So let's start off by hitting play and we're gonna get our card and we're gonna scan it. Uh, of course, printed card, not actual card because uh, they're in America and it takes a while to get across. So transition first, then logo, then our, our surrounding object, uh, surrounding video, then info card, then latest video on cards, and then a watch more style uh, button coming up. And that's the whole process there. So let's go through exactly how we're doing this. Uh, and let's start off with the CS code. So we have our load sequence.cs, which I've written, uh, which is all, all it's doing is taking a whole bunch of game objects that are each of the individual items. So like we've got video detect, which is the transition effect. We've got uh, image logo, which is the actual logo and so on. We've got the outline, we've got the left, the right videos. And I've also put in here animation for when we get to that. Uh, obviously right this very second we don't have animations. So first off, uh, when we hit start, it's just gonna set all those objects to false. And that is, uh, set the active, sorry, to false. And that is just so that they can all make sure they're turned off so that they're ready to go uh, for when we actually need them. Then we have the load sequence start. And this is the actual uh, process that we're going through when an image target is detected. So firstly, we set all the objects again to false. And this is just so that if someone started to partway load through the process, we want to make sure that we set them all back to false the next time they scan again. Because we don't want them to pick up where they've left off. It'll look kind of weird if they're getting partway through. From there, we start our co-routine. And our co-routine, all it is a matter of is waiting for a certain amount of seconds, then running something. Waiting another few seconds, running something else. And it just continues like that. So for our case, we're waiting for four seconds, then we run part one. And part one in this case is turning on that transition effect, setting the active to true. Then we wait two seconds because that's roughly how long that video takes to play. And we're running part two, which all part two then is doing is turning that transition effect off and turning the image logo on. So that's that's the whole process is it's, it's just going through part one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's waiting for a certain amount of time between each one. Now, how we do that actually in Unity, how we utilize this script in Unity. Uh, firstly, I have a, an empty game object, which is called loading script. I've then taken each of these individual objects inside the image target and just drag and drop them to the correlating ones. So the video fire object relates to the video detect because that's the actual transition effect. So you could, in theory, mix and match these, but obviously it would look kind of weird because we're sequencing stuff. But all we're doing is taking each of these game objects, dragging them onto the right, so that then they can be utilized in the load sequence. Along with that, in the actual image target itself, we had to set on target found uh, what is actually need what actually needs to run. So when the target is found, it's running this loading script, the load sequence start. And when the loading uh, when the target is lost, what does it need to do? And in our case, we're just using stop all coroutines because we don't want that loading animation to continue. So that's the real long and short of uh, of how to get the sequencing set up in Unity. So let's get into animation. Okay, so similar deal. I've gone through, I've set up the animations. Let me show you where it's at. It is almost at our end sort of uh, end step. Let me show you where it's up to so I can example it first and then I'll take you through how I've actually set it up. So firstly, again, let's get our printed card and let's scan it. And then let's see the animation run through. So we get that, we get the zoom in on the logo itself. We get a slide out from the side of the card. We get a slide out of the other video. 
And those are our main three animations. So then we get the watch more button come up. And so it just gives it a little bit more life uh, in having a sort of movement to it rather than just being static uh, and then just appearing, you know? So let me take you through what we did here. So to achieve this, uh, what we did, uh, I'm just gonna take you through the logo as an example, where it's zooming into the screen. So we have in our image target here, a thing called a logo holder, and then we have the actual image itself. Now the reason we have a logo holder is simply so we can run this animation uh, pretty simply. Uh, and it also allows us to interchange that image or change that image out to be like a video or whatever we want uh, really easily because we can just add a child item and this, the animation will always utilize, uh, be utilized on whatever children are inside. So firstly, on the logo holder, uh, we have to add a component and we have to add an animation sequence. Uh, and Sorry, just an animation. We're then going to create a new animation. Uh, so in this case, I already have one called logo animation. And this will bring up your logo animator. Now I'm gonna quickly turn off my webcam area so that you can see what I'm doing. Now in the bottom left here, we have uh, a thing called logo holder and it's saying that the scale has changed. And what this is doing, if we look in the top right here, uh, so we can see the scale area, this is increasing the size of the logo over time. And, th and that's all it's doing, is just simply uh, increasing the actual image size overall. So to do this, we would hit the record button, you would set your values at certain points. So for our case, we start at 0 0.01, and then say at 15 seconds, we didn't want it to be 0 0.3, 0 0.25, but we just wanted it to be 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. This will then create a keyframe in our animation area. And then it will continue along the journey and it knows at certain breakpoints or at certain key points what the scale should be. So then it will just move uh, the rest of the scale along the way at a equal pace. So you could do this to create like an easing effect and the likes. Uh, once you finish, you wanna turn that off so that you are no longer changing the animation. And then what we've done is we've then changed the script so that it allows to handle for playing the animation only when that item becomes live. So let's quickly go through that. So we have the logo holder holds the logo animation. On our loading script here, we also have our three animations that we declared before. And in here, we're declaring the objects that hold the animation itself. So for the first one, we're using the logo holder. Then we're using the info holder, which is our card. And then we're using the, utilizing, utilizing the latest holder, which is our video off to the right, which is the latest video from the group. And so inside then our load sequence, firstly, we're doing the same sort of thing as before where we have it publicly set up. But then as part of our parts, so in part two here, we're turning off the transition effect, we're turning on the image logo, but then we're also playing the animation. And we don't need to stop the animation because we have uh, time, like this is all time-based by the sequencing, but we need to make sure that anytime we're setting something to true, we also wanna play that animation so it gives a, a better effect rather than just appearing straight on screen. So that allows us to now have animation along with sequencing. The last part that we want to uh, put in is interaction. That is some sort of on click effect so that when you uh, click on like the watch more button or even just click on the, uh, the image target itself, it allows you to take them to somewhere else, whether that's buy online, watch more videos. For me, I'm just gonna utilize the watch more button uh, where it's gonna take them directly to the Too Hype YouTube channel. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna put that in and let me take you through it. Okay, so I've gone through and I've now set up the on-click effect and basically all we're doing, uh, actually, let me just show you. So we're going through, we're detecting and then we're putting a blank image over the top 
so that at any point you can click. So let me click and basically it's going to load a video. So for me it's loaded an ad, but <laughs> uh, it would load the actual video. And we can see like it's the two hive, we can see the two hive channel. You know that it's gone through to the correct video. It's just, you know, YouTube and ads. <laughs> so basically all we've done here is in our image target area, we now have a canvas, which is set to screen space overlay. And inside that we have a button. Now this button, uh, what we've done is remove the text that, um, that Unity would normally give. So normally when you create a button, there's also text underneath that. It also has um, color and all that sort of stuff. So all I've done is I've created an image that is entirely transparent that will cover the entire screen. Now maybe I've gone a bit excessive here because I've given the width of 6,000, the height of 3,000. I would definitely say that's excessive. Uh, for a phone, for a computer, all the all of the above. So maybe uh, resize that to appropriately uh, fit for yourself. But along with that, uh, we have given the button an image. Um, uh, sorry, we have given it a material which is called invisible. And invisible has uh, an image set to it, which is literally a one by one transparent PNG. And that allows us to knock out the button imagery itself, but allow us to still utilize the button uh, aspect of things. And so now we have a on-click sequence where we've, I've just put this in the loading sequence script, maybe not the best place for it, but it's just easy. And we have a function called open URL. And in this case, uh, it just has one URL, which is the specific URL that we just uh, looked at in Chrome, where we're utilizing the application.open URL call and then whatever URL you want. And that takes us through, that's it. That's everything that we have. Uh, so we now have a sequenced, animated, and interactable play, uh, trading card, uh, whereas just traditionally you just have a trading card. Now, obviously, this is not limited to just trading cards. There are so many different applications. This was just one example that I wanted to showcase as a potential avenue. And so that's it, guys. We've gone through, we've created the whole project. I do really like the visuals of it. I think that there's probably a lot more improvements on visual-wise that is really just limited to the mind. Uh, the whole like utilizing sequencing with animation really allows you to bring something to life for augmented reality. But anyway, thanks for sticking around. Let me know if you have any ideas in the comments. I'll see you next time. Peace.